So, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'll take you through the pathophysiology of thrombocytopenia. Um, but since also our patient had uh, uh, anemia also, uh, we shall go through um, also anemia briefly, so that it's a reminder for the whole group. Um, so, let me first go through, sorry, um, the pathophysiology of uh, uh, thrombocytopenia. So, thrombocytopenia was already defined, and I hope everybody uh, remembers the definition. Um, I also hope that everybody remembers um, the normal physiology of uh, primary homeostasis and what platelets does. Unless you know the normal, you cannot understand the abnormalities. So, there are mechanisms which are proposed in uh, thrombocytopenia uh, in malaria. So um, those mechanisms, they are not clear mechanisms, but through studies, observational studies, they are proposed. These mechanisms are proposed. Um, so uh, during acute uh, B. falciparum attacks, um, occasionally plated count decreases as low as um, 10,000 to 20,000. Um, the mechanisms, we'll, we'll talk about it, but the mechanisms which are, which are, uh, are, are proposed, uh, we have uh, platelets can be activated, we also have additions of infected, uh, um, um, infected erythrocytes to the platelets. So the number one mechanism which has been proposed by the systemic review articles which we read, uh, number one is uh, the spleen. We are aware the spleen takes part the the immune immunity of our body. So usually what, what the spleen does during malaria actually clears the, the infected red blood cells plus the uninfected red blood cells. So it also clears that uh, platelets because you have hyperspleenism in this case and then you are also um, uh, distracting the, what? the platelets. So some, some data suggested that platelets are also sequestered in the spleen during acute infection. That's one of the mechanisms, so you need to remember. And usually, in endemic areas of malaria, we have the spleen is usually um, hyperactive, and you have a spleen which is big, which is also causing destruction, sequestering platelets, and also removing what? the infected and uninfected red blood cells. The other mechanism which is also proposed is that we have the antibody mediated uh, platelet destruction. And there is evidence that platelets associated uh, IgG um, is increased in malaria, in malaria uh, patients. And this causes, um, you have increased IgG and then it will form a complex with the platelets and then it's going to be removed. So that's another um, mechanism. The, the third mechanism is that there is also um, oxidative stress where you have free radicals which are produced and they also take an important part in destruction of uh, malaria um, um, completed destruction in malaria infection. So it has also been noted that there is whole marrow secretion which affects the megakaryocytes production. So you also have a bone marrow suppression. So the other thing is uh, platelet aggregation. And usually in malaria, you, because of the deformed red blood cells and, and the other factors, you, you have endothelial damage. When you have endo endothelial damage, um, you expose the Van Wilbrun uh, factor, and then, then the platelets would, would adhere there, and that will cause what we call a conceptive uh, coagulopathy. So, um, this diagram actually summarizes the mechanisms we, we talked about. How many mechanisms did we talk about? Five. Five mechanisms. Those are the proposed mechanisms. Others can be there, but that, those are the ones which I came across. So, if you look at the, uh, this, this diagram, you have the spleen here, okay? That side you have the endothelium and you can see the platelets are adhering. And then here you have the bone marrow. And then here you have the, the immune mediated. 
So the immune mediated is the one we talked about. You have high levels of I, IgG, which will attack to, which, which will attach to, to the platelets and it's been removed by um, phagocytosis. Um, that side is where we have the platelet aggregation. It's another mechanism. Endothelial injury, primary homeostasis takes place, and then you have platelets which are adhering to the site of injury, and then you have a conception coagulography. At the same time, you also have separation of the bone marrow. And then the other mechanism is that the spleen sequesters the platelets. That's how you end up with thrombocytopenia in malaria. Thank you very much.